Nina Kim is a 21-year-old who now has an NABF crown that he'd like to put in the closet to wear a world crown. This transplanted Nigerian has speed and power to burn, and he showed it here against Eduardo Torres. He has a great arsenal of punches, and they were all displayed as he took Torres out for one of his 13 KO wins. He won the NABF crown by outclassing Cesar Martinez. The uppercut became one of his primary weapons. And he showed the poise that belies his youth. And he'll need that poise and skill to put away KG Memo Flores and repeat this scene tonight. So let's talk about the keys to victory in this one. Well, for Akeem, the, one of the keys is always to use a strong jab. It's what makes everything work for him. Turn it on in the middle rounds, uh, I think that that's when he might really get to Flores, and uh, I think that uh, that's when he'd have a good chance of taking him out. For Flores, a strong body attack is important because you've got to get inside that jab of Akeem and work to his body if there's any hope to beat him. That's it. Avoid cuts. Hard to do, and certain Martin Quiroz wasn't able to. Flores has cut in all the knockout losses that he he's had, so he has to avoid that for all possible. Is it fair to say that Flores will be his toughest test? I think he will be, because number one, he's been in with a tougher quality than any of Akeem's opponents have been, and he has shown that he is a tough guy. Doesn't get knocked out. The only knockout losses I said he's had have come because of cuts, so he's not the kind of guy that Akeem's going to nail with that big right hand. He's going to go automatically, or you wouldn't expect it in any case. I have to say one thing that is a scare card for me. Flores, when we spoke with him this morning, said he has a lot of respect for Akeem, that he's heard he's very very good fighter, even though he's never seen him, and we have a few surprises for him. And I, whenever I hear a fighter say that, it kind of scares me a little bit because I think the surprises are usually on him. Well, sometimes they are, and of course, often when fighters try and change their style for a specific fight, somehow it seems different than baseball and football and basketball, where teams can do that and get away with it. But with boxers, it seems that that doesn't work very often, and so you have to wonder if uh, the surprises Memo Flores are talking about are ones that will be effective. What he needs to do beyond anything else is simply get inside against uh, Akeem Anafuoshi, that's his real name, even though he calls himself Kid Akeem, and try and, and work that body and push Akeem into a fight that he doesn't want, something different. I mean, when you see Akeem, if you haven't seen him, he's like a miniature Tommy Hearns. He's got that long jab and straight right. He wants to be in that rhythm. Yeah, and I think the, the real trap for him and the thing that he has to worry about, yes, he's been virtually promised a title shot, but between now and then, he's got to keep his concentration, and that includes tonight. Yeah, and that is the danger for all boxers. We've seen so many boxers on this series who were a fight away from a championship match who lost. And uh, there you see that NABF title belt that Akeem would like to trade for a world title. And uh, the robe fairly colorful, I would say. I would say that's fairly colorful, yes. Well, he looks the part of a champion, doesn't he? At least. And he fights the part of a champion as well. Yeah, he really does, actually. He's a guy, and the thing that he's getting better at, by his own admission, he's starting to, when he gets a man hurt, he was saying he had a tendency in the past to let him off, and now he's really becoming a very good finisher. He has been that. And there's Memo Flores, who uh, got the win in his last his last time out. And uh, he's, he's a boxer who has a very real chance in this match if he can... Get inside that strong jab of Akeem and uh, work inside effectively. And in Kid Akeem's corner is Roger Mayweather wearing a Nigerian hat. We'll talk a little bit more about him right now. Let's meet these two with Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the North American Boxing Federation. Supervisor at ringside for the NABF is Dean Lohais. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and the King of Beers, Budweiser, present the featured bout of the evening from right here at Bally's Casino Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada. So let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the NABF Super Flyweight Championship. The referee for this bout is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the white trunks with red letters and weighs an even 114 pounds. Originally from Acapulco, Mexico, now fighting out of Los Angeles, California. His professional record, 23 victories, 18 by KO against 10 defeats. Introducing the number three ranked challenger, Memo Flore. And fighting out of the blue corner, 
wearing the blue trunks with red trim. He weighs an even 115 pounds from Las Vegas, Nevada. Undefeated as a professional with a record of 18 and 0, 13 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the NABF Super Flyweight Champion, the Black Eagle Kid Aki. You have already given instructions in your respective dressing room. Any question? No. Vaselina. Yeah, too much, too much. Vaselina. David. Yeah. Sí, pero wipe it. Wipe, wipe the uh, Vaseline. Okay? Wipe it. Okay. Okay, go to your car. So there is a look at Kid Aki. My time will come, it says, uh, on his head, actually, is where it says that. The walking billboard. And in the other corner, Memo Flores. Memo, tough customer. This will not be an easy evening for Kim Akeem, at the very least. You know, Akeem has been here in Las Vegas for uh, a number of years now. Went to Rancho High School. Boy, I'll tell you, looking at his, at his, at his uh, outfit, he's taking Las Vegas to heart. I I'll tell you what. That's one thing. That's going to keep Memo's arms up there because he's going to be covering his eyes. <laughs> Sunglasses would be in order. Akeem with the 72% knockout ratio is a bigger puncher than Memo Flores. He's a bigger puncher than most people in that division. Just the kid Akeem, the plans for him not to stay at 115, but rather to move up. But they want a championship. And then they're looking at Orlando Canizales, as the IBF fan of champion is one guy they might fight. That's an interesting fight. In Poe, would it ever? Because the styles especially, Akeem the tall boxer from the outside with the power and Canizales who's got great skills getting inside and working the body. It's interesting looking at, at Kid Akeem and he's got some pretty flashy attire. He's not a flashy guy. He's no. very calm, very mild mannered sort of guy and not really what you'd put in the category of extrovert. I mean, this is a, a macho Camacho outfit, but the man is not macho Camacho. But interestingly, over the last several years, he's gotten much more articulate, much more used to dealing with people like you and I in the press, talking to him, and uh, very nice demeanor about it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I, I hope it wasn't interpreted as being anything, but the kind words for him is a very nice guy. And yeah, but as, guy. but as you say, more subdued in his personality than that outfit. Yeah, he has a very laid-back personality. Now, Memo's trying to get him into a left hook contest. there. That's where Memo wants to be, if he can get in a little bit closer than that. Well, early on, Akeem getting off much quicker than Memo Flores. Memo shakes his arms, trying to get the cobwebs out. Akeem uses that jab uh, for a number of different things. He uses it to set up the right hand. He uses it, obviously, as a punishing weapon. And he uses it as a starting point for all his combinations. It's a strong jab, too, not a slapping jab. When he brings that right behind it pretty quick, too, doesn't he? They've been working, Miguel Diaz, uh, his trainer has been working with him for, since he's been here in this country. Really pleased with what Akeem has accomplished. Short left hand, back floor is up. That's hard for a puncher of Akeem's size to throw that short punch, but he threw it with authority. Good first round for kid Akeem. We'll be back. Start of round number two. And as you see the jabs of Kid Akeem. Quick jab, wasn't quick, it? Was so quick it caught me by surprise. Unbelievable. Those are jabs that uh, are needed for him to execute his game plan. Punch profile jabs oh, in the first round. Look at this. Mama. That's a good percentage of jabs to land. And Memo Flores didn't exactly land a lot. That's about the number, the same percentage of jabs that Cornell Whitaker was landing the other night. And Bob and Logan, uh, our punch profile, were counting those. Unlike Sid Nathan and uh, Harry Gibbs, the two judges uh, who didn't count them. Double left hand by Al Bernstein. I swear I'll lay off those guys. I'll get it all out of my system this this week, and then I'll, I'll never mention their names again because they don't deserve to be there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And again, Akeem just with a brilliant jab. He's just keeping Flores off completely. And, you know, if you, obviously, it's not so easy not to do this, but if you can't take uh, a fighter like Akeem or a Tommy Hearns or uh, fighters of that ilk out of the rhythm of that jab, you will never win the fight. And what's more, you inevitably will get nailed with some huge right hand. You might not get knocked out, but more often than not, you will. Flores did get there a moment ago with a right hand and did back Akeem up for the first time. There was a counter right, a good right by Akeem. And an uppercut behind it. Billy Baxter, who uh, the manager of Kid Akeem, of course, many people know, is a very colorful figure in boxing, was a great poker player, a renowned gambler. He said that uh, uh, they've wanted tougher matches for Akeem, but it's been tough to get them. Not that many tough guys in that weight division that you can get in the ring with. And they claim that uh, Rob Kidoga, the IBF champion, had a, uh, an offer to fight uh, a Kid Akeem by one of the networks and turned it down. And that's very surprising because, as Billy Baxter pointed out, in this weight division, you don't get a lot of shots at the network, and yet the champion is saying no to the challenge. of that, and uh, there may be other mitigating reasons. Rich Landers, in fact, the man who is Robert Kuroga, who we've had uh, top rank boxing a number of times. Memo not effective on the inside. You see, he needs very badly to be effective. You know what I really like about what Kid Akeem has done, I'm sure that all the boxing people watching do, is he's able to tie floors up very well on the inside, not allowed to get uppercut hurt. As we come to the end of the second round, Flores is hurt right now, but he will get through this. Side, Kid Akeem has this weapon at his disposal. Ooh, an excellent uppercut. Now, tell you what, that punch is becoming his best, as good as his right hand is. Three of them tonight. That was right at the end of the last eight seconds of that last round, and Flores went to his corner feeling the effects of it. And there it is again. You know, when you are that tall and you can land that uppercut on the inside against shorter opponents, you are, I mean, just so effective. Cesar Martinez winning the NABF crown. That was a big weapon for him. A lot of power in Kid Akeem's punch. There's a lot of power in his jab, really. It's not, it's the antithesis of a pawing jab. And this, of course, is most important. Akeem has clearly won the first two rounds. I, I always use clearly, hesitatingly. Yeah, well, in this case, gosh, I mean, he's just totally dominated. Miguel Diaz in the corner of Kid Akeem between rounds was basically saying you've got to come up with a variation on the theme. Don't be too predictable. And that more than anything is what they they want from Kid Akeem as he continues to develop. He jabbed the straight right hand. Yeah, that's there, but he's got the uppercut. Ooh, they bang heads there. No okay, what's your head? Thank goodness Very no fortunate cut. there, yeah. As we had in our previous, one of our previous talks with Kiro's and Phillips, which Kiro's had a cut from the class of head. Came continuing to work the jab. And the left hand that time, that time he turned the jab over, turned it into a hook. Probably the only area of Kitty King's uh, offensive arsenal that they that needs a little work still is the left hook. Doesn't crank it up with as much leverage as probably they would like. But the jab, the uppercut, and straight right hand are terrific. And he's also a very good body puncher, even though we haven't seen too much of that in this box. Oh, quick, quick right hand. Flores in a retreating posture. See, there's the hooks from him, and they're okay, but they're not as effective as the other punches he throws. That was a good hook. Yes, it was. Interestingly enough, and we touched upon this earlier, Al, he's, he seems to throw a better hook from close quarters than he does at long range. That is true of many fighters, and many boxers throw a better left hook to the body than they do the head. Somebody like Michael Nunn, in his case, it's a right hook. When he's inside and he digs the right hook to the body, there are a few better, but when he throws hooks to the head, it's not as good. And that's true with Akeem. Getting there with an uppercut once again, and that's been a very good weapon, his best weapon of the night so far. 
So we have to the end of the third round, and it is continuing to be Kid Akeem who just owns this fight so far, impressively so. Kid Akeem's corner was Roger Mayweather, who was doing talking between rounds, and not Miguel Diaz. Diaz taking a round off. <laughs> well, it can't work every round. Yeah, Roger did tell him, he gave him some good advice. He said, don't press, the knockout will come with what you're landing. He also made an interesting point, I thought, and he said, don't necessarily hit him with that jab. Show him the jab and hit him with something else. Yeah, and boy, as we look at the total punches, Akeem just totally dominating. 16% at a terrible ratio for uh, Memo Flores and 59% superb for Akeem. If anybody can tell Akeem how to fight this style, it's Roger Mayweather. He, um, I listed some other boxers with this style. I didn't put Roger in the category, and uh, I should have, because he's got the great jab and the right hand. And in Roger's case, his hook is farther developed than Akeem. He's a former champion. Good overhand right by Memo Flores. Very good shot. And that backed Akeem up against the ropes exactly where Miguel Diaz doesn't want him, but he fights off the ropes. Oh. Oh. Good overhand up. right. And we haven't seen Akeem in his fights get hit too often, period. Let's see how he reacts to this. And if Memo Flores can duplicate that overhand right. He hit him with the right hand oh. earlier in the fight that did make Akeem back up, but it didn't have the consequences of this last one. Akeem, the floor is getting in a little bit closer now. He's keeping that left hand pretty low. There's floor is trying to get the right hand in. Now, I'll tell you what Kid Akeem's doing that could open up that right hand again, though. He's starting to throw his uppercut from a little too far out. Once you do that, you get hit with that overhand right. That's when Akeem was throwing a right uppercut. So cute. But, of course, Memo's right hand, while they're getting there, not devastating to Akeem. Oh, Boy, they're, they're putting him back in the fight, at least, giving him some hope here. And they are backing Akeem up yeah. when he gets there. It's, they're not pity pat shots. And now, and, and, and another, now, why is that also working? Because Flores is, is jabbing his way in, and this is where he wants to be, and now he's working. Flores, a guy much more experienced than Kid Akeem, who had it all his own way through the first three rounds. And doing good body work. And also remember, Memo, not a man you can take out easily. He does cut, but he hasn't so far in this fight. He doesn't get knocked out very often. Good round. Akeem wins it, but I'll tell you what, it was a better round for Memo Flores. Pretty deep, man. They definitely got Akeem's attention in that round. Pretty deep. Pretty deep. This would be interesting. When you, when you get him inside, okay, when you get him inside, okay, you use your apricot. You see what you mean? Anytime you come out, you come out with the apricot, you hit it. You use it a little bend. Bend the, front, the, bend the front knee and come out from the bottom, okay? Then when you go in the distance, back to the jack. If you see him, also you to you. You know that. When I say also you do, just Good boom, advice from Miguel two. Diaz. Here is where that overhand right got in. And he landed, he landed a couple more in that round. Even at this point, going back to technical advice, some fundamentals saying when you throw that uppercut, don't forget to bend your knee, which is important. Diaz telling him that. Later on, look at the jab. The jab sets up the right hand for Memo Flores. Very important that he jab his way in. So the quality going in that round to Memo Flores, but the quantity once again going to Kid Akeem. Interesting note handed us by Punch Profile guys. Kid Akeem had averaged 51 jabs a round through the first three rounds, but in the fourth round, he threw only 34, and he took a little bit of a beating. I'm not saying he was beaten up, but he took a little bit of a beating. Good indication that he didn't keep Flores out as much. And Flores doing better in that round. Not winning it, but, uh, but doing a little bit better in terms of percentage and numbers of punches landed. starting to get to the point where uh, 
good boxing analysts are supposed to remind you that the kid Akiva has never been past eight rounds. And they're supposed to remind you that Memo Flores has been ten a number of times. So that uh, if you're looking for that, you should uh, pay attention to it. And, of course, the fact that this is a 12-round fight. Right now we're in round number five. Those things will all start to come into play over the next couple of rounds. And again, Flores backing Kid Akeem up. And a left hand by Flores. Now, if Flores can get him into a left hook contest, uh, it may serve his, his purposes. Because, as I say, Akeem has a decent left hook, but it's not his major power punch. as lopsided as it appeared it might be after the first three rounds. And even with the keep pretty much winning every round, the last couple, Memo Flores has come to life. And I'll tell you, I'm, you can't overstate the length of this fight. If Memo Flores doesn't get himself in big trouble in the next couple of rounds, then there will be some question marks about Kid Akeem going the full 12. He's never done it before. If he has to get it. Always a very difficult thing for a fighter to do the first time. Almost to the number. You talk to a fighter going either 10 or 12, whatever it happens to be, for the first time, and they always say, you don't know how to pace yourself because you've never been there. One thing that is significant is that Flores is getting inside much more easily than he did. And he's not landing great when he's in there, but he is landing some. And when he's inside, it keeps can't throw that that excellent jab. And yes, the number of jabs from Akeem has gone down, and the numbers landed have gone down. But which isn't to say he's still not in control. Even the pace has gone down a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not a big shot, but nonetheless. A lot of good you know, Akeem's punches being caught on the gloves now, for is not that combination, however. So we come to the end of the fifth round, a wild swing by Kid Akeem to end it, but Flores is getting back in. On the side. Two okay. voices you're hearing, you those of Miguel Diaz. Come back with the right hand. Let's go. And Roger Mayweather. That's Billy Baxter leaning in. Uh, interesting personalities in that corner. Yeah, a lot of them. We start the sixth round. Remember, it's a 12-round fight. You can tell the uh, purpose with which Kid Akeem came out in this round. He looked much more intent. We still have it a shutout for Kid Akeem, but it's interesting. Uh, the last two rounds, as opposed to the first three, are very different, even though the results are the same. Yeah, and Memo Flores has shown some signs that he could be in this fight. They really want the left hook from Akeem. And a moment ago, he dug into the body, which he hasn't done so much. And there, and mixing his attack a little bit. Well, you know, with a boxer like Akeem, you know, he, he hits with such power and great combinations. When a guy doesn't fall, it's almost a shock, and then he's left with these questions as you head into later rounds, or could be. Wouldn't yeah. be the first man that that's happened to. Flores, as you can see, coming down with his head very low, and Akeem ducking in, and there is a real danger of a headbutt. Digging that punch. Now, that was a slap. You saw it there. But when he was throwing it to the body, he was digging it very well. Oh, nice right. Nice noise on the inside. Short right hand. Now, if I was Memo Flores, let me tell you, I would be fainting and jabbing to the body to get that left hand down by Akeem and then be throwing that right hand. He's got to do something to make set that right hand up. Either jab or faint the jab and then come with the right Try and time the Akeem jab if you can. Problem with Flores so far. The reason that Akeem keeps winning the rounds is that, yes, Flores is getting there with the occasional right hand, but that's the key word, occasion. Well, and, and Akeem throwing four times as many punches and landing many more.
Hakeem has picked the pace up a little bit. Oh, he, this he really has. I'm sure the number of punches will reflect that. He's shown many more punches, I think, in this round than in previous rounds, in the last couple. So a better sixth round, and another one going to the column of Kid Akeem and putting Flores in a little bit more desperate Didn't situation. He? For Flores, the body attack has not been as good as he would like, but he hasn't been cut, and that is a real plus to him. And he's still there, and he's still throwing bombs, but they are all too infrequent. And this man on our card has won every round. Won the last one a little bit more convincing. Yeah, he really was effective in the... Uh, See the look on his face. He is heading into territory now that isn't that familiar to him. He's been seven rounds a couple of times, but not off. In the sixth round, the punch profile shows Akeem stepping it up. 91 thrown, 46 connected, high connect percent. And that represents 15 or 20 more punches than he was throwing in the, the last few rounds, maybe more. And uh, an indication that he is really going after it here. Oh, that was an excellent hook by Akeem. Throwing with lots of conviction and leverage. And the right hand, too, and another right hand. Flores bounces back with a right hand of his own, but he's taking much more than he's giving. Normally, when Akeem starts hitting people like he's been hitting Memo Flores, they go. So this is an indication to him that he's stepping up in class. Not everybody's going to go down when you nail him with those shots. Memo with, a, with one of his infrequent jabs. Well, that punch has been in mothballs for him. He hasn't used it much at all. punches. Of course, now with that point production, he wants to win this round to make it even. And a close fight, which this may or may not be, most likely is not, but in a close fight, a point production really has an appreciable effect. Oh, yeah, it can be, well, it, it, it can almost be around. In This being a 12 round, we don't know what's going to transpire in the next five. Can't use the uppercut there toward the end of the round. It'll never really materialize. So you're in the corner of Memo Flores now. No tienes nada. Tienes un piquete de mosco ahí, hombre. Uh -huh, sí, no sí. tienes nada. No tiras They golpes. Lo tienes aquí. They work on the... Te la pasa más. What might be a slight abrasion under the left eye of Memo Flores. No 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 and, uh, as I said, he has cut in several fights that he's ended up losing. So it's good news for him that that's the worst of it that he's gotten considering how many punches he's been hit with. This may be where that abrasion took place, the jab of Akimia right on that spot, and then after that was where it materialized. It worked by the boys in the truck as they come up with that punch. It would almost be better if it were cut. That's one of those things that right now is not an abrasion, really, other than a, perhaps a little bit of a rub, but there is a lot of swelling there. And he doesn't want to have that eye swell up so that he can't see that right hand coming from Akimia. There's enough trouble when he can see it coming. Round number eight. Headed for uncharted waters for Kid Akeem. Looks plenty strong though, shows no signs of fatigue. 
the jab. That has been the secret for Kid Akeem so far, and as you see, a very high connect percentage. For Kid Akeem to be effective, he needs to be landing about that percentage. Because Memo Flores, who hasn't thrown very many jabs, also has not landed at a good percentage. Flores throwing some hooks and uppercuts on the inside. That's what he needs to do, just get in there and wail away. And Akeem's not a bad defensive fighter on the inside. Big, tall guy, but he knows how to tie an opponent up. He's all arms and elbows in there, and he uses that to his advantage to block those shots. He's originally from Nigeria. Great athlete, so not only in the sport of boxing, he has to say. Honest, because there was a big right hand. And that definitely hurt Flores. Uppercut by Kid Akeem. And the right hand again. This is the eighth round of the NABF Super Flyweight Championship. Kid Akeem right now administering a beating to Memo Flores, the more experienced of the two. Flores, a 26-year-old who has more pro fights than Akeem, who is 21. But as you said, experience not the whole answer here. Well, Memo Flores has taken some major league shots from Akeem. We're talking about a good knockout puncher with 13 knockouts and 18 wins. Another big right hand. Huge wow. shot. That's as nice a right hand as the team can throw. And he teed it up and just nailed him with it. He's not just using his jab as a range finder, Akeem. I think Memo Flores is really starting to slow off a little bit here in this round. I think with good reason. to administer what is amounting to a collective beat. Washington and Charles the Natural Murray and Robert Guy. Doubleheader in Rochester, New York next week. Here is Kid Akeem with that good straight right hand and then boom, the jab after it. Usually it's the other way around, but in this case the jab was there. And you're going to be in France, are you not? For the I French am. Open? Yes, yes. That should be fun. To that. Always a great event. Any early predictions on who will win? Well, it, it's interesting that two fast court players are the two top seeds. Stefan Edberg and Boris Becker are the two top seeds amongst the men. I think actually this is the time that the women are going to attract as much attention as the men because I Monica Selish with that great win in the Lutas Cup for Steffi Graf. She's playing great. Uh, you'll be there. Memo Flores would like to be there at the end of this fight or end it quicker, and he's making an effort now to do that. He was there with the right hand. He's been there with the right hand, but it's just been too infrequent. And he's taken much more than he's given. And this is, this is the point in the fight where he's got to try and push Akeem back. If there's going to be any question about his stamina, he might as well test it. Shout out for Akeem. I, he's won every round in my mind. Seem the least bit tired. Flores seems like he might have withered just a bit. He's doing a lot more leaning than he was. It's better to talk about some of the great Nigerian athletes. Of course, King Olajuwon probably at the head of that pack, but they're good. 
and the fighters have been a lot of great back and field performers, a lot of quarter milers. And milers, Kenya, was he not from Nigeria? No, he wasn't from Nigeria. Who was that? Kip Kenya? No, he was from, Ke from Kenya. Kenya. From Kenya, in yeah. fact. All right. All right, I failed the test. You know, Sente Igwebuike is the top quarter there you, miler there you from go. Nigeria. Why do I know that? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm proud that you do. <laughs> okay, so I'll never do track and field. Good body work by uh, to get a, a, a hundred letters about <laughs> Kip Kenya not being from uh, Nigeria. Why do I open my mouth? But he was a great, great man. Yes, he was. Flores really not punching with a lot of conviction now. I mean, just isn't getting any leverage into those punches. Oh, nice hook. By Akeem now just doing basically what he wants with Memo Flores, and he's, he's fighting like a guy who feels that he's taken Flores' best shots and those were earlier in the fight. And now facing a, uh, a Memo who is not as uh, who is not as powerful in any case. Point it out. So you might say that Memo has no reply. Yeah, that's good. We went what nine? Yeah, nine rounds. Not so. bad, huh? Without a punt of any sort. I like that. Right. I'm proud of us. You don't take no steam out of the heat, okay? Nine. What round is it, Billy? Nine. 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 You dictate. You dictate. Sit Billy, back, you take your put your hands breath, up, and then go when you're ready to go. You ain't got to swing at everything in front of you. You just go when you want to go. Relax. You wait ahead. Well, you move your legs. Move relax. your legs. Move your legs. Again, okay, when you're Take jabbing. A breath. You Take a deep hey. breath. Take a deep breath. You can move your legs. No, no, no. no. Oh, I'm talking about the speech. Take a deep breath. Feet. Feet. That move way you, you can snap in your move back. Your head, okay? okay? Relax. Well, relax. You ain't in the fight going away. The uppercut, such an important part of... Akeem's arsenal, and there you see it as he was backing up. Look at this, and of course that is, uh, now don't correct me if I'm wrong here, that is Africa on the top yes. of the hat, I hope. Yes, it is. I may not know where Kip Kenya's from, but I know Africa when I see it. <laughs> on the top of Roger Mayweather's hat. <laughs> from the truck comes the word that that might be Connecticut, we're not sure. <laughs> And in Kid Akeem's corner, basically they were telling him, you got to fight one, just don't do anything stupid. And I don't think he will. Well, he's doing all the right things here. And uh, as we said, he's now in a place where he's never been, never been to the 10th round before. Doesn't look that way, though. No, he's effective, throwing body shots like that. And Memo Flores not able to get inside that jab right now. The number of jabs he's landing is staggering. First fight for Memo Flores in the United States. Everything else in Mexico, only one fight in London. When he took on Duke McKenzie, the former world champion, lost an eight to him. So that should give you an indication. I mean, McKenzie, good fighter, former world champion, went the distance with him. He's gone the distance with, with everybody, except for the cuts. Yeah, that's his only problem. That is not the problem tonight, and thus he is still on his feet. And trying hard, he just doesn't have the firepower needed to deal with Anna, with uh, Kim and I'm sure that Miguel Diaz, Billy Baxter, have to be quite pleased with what they've seen from Kid Akeem. And I'm sure somewhere inside of them, they, they probably are happy that this fight may go 12 rounds. And in fact, Baxter said to us earlier today that while he loved a knockout, good left hook may have hurt Flores, he wouldn't mind if this fight went away, and it has gone a pretty long distance. We've seen two boxers tonight, first Vince Phillips and now Akeem, who rose above even where they were against guys that you look at it now and you might say, oh, gee, they weren't such great opponents. Well, they were good, and uh, these guys just fought better. 
especially Kiros, who would have been under normal circumstances very tough. And Memo Flores, you can see, not an easy man to dispatch. Know. You can see why he's won as many fights as he has, why he's gotten guys out of there. He has a good right hand. He's taken the very best that Akeem has to offer, and he took a couple more right there. A left hand and a right hand behind it, and that microcosm has been the at the end of the round landing the hook, and then a good right hand. And it's funny, that was an excellent right, and you can't really tell how much it hurt Nemo, but it was an excellent right hand. Interesting numbers handed us by the punch profile guys, and I, I love G-Way's numbers, but here's one. Akeem has landed more jabs, landed 213 jabs, more than Flores has landed total punches. In fact, many more than Flores has landed total punches. Flores only landing 133 total punches, so it's an indication of why Akeem is so far ahead on my scar card. And I would assume on the judges as well. Well, it's obvious that Kid Akeem did not take Memo Flores lightly. He still appears to be very strong, does not appear to be the least bit fatigued. Just to show you what kind of sport boxing is, though, somewhere out there, there are boxing pundits and fans who are actually saying to themselves, well, boy, I don't know, though. I used to think this Kid Akeem could punch. He can't knock this guy out. That's true. And that happens a lot in boxing, but you have to accept the fact that Memo Flores is not easy to knock out. And, and Akeem has thrown some just really strong punches. Flores still fighting. Flores is not just yeah. sitting there waiting to be hit. No, he really isn't. He just, and his punches have lacked steam in the last several rounds, though. snapping Flores' head back. It's an excellent jab. It really is. It's punishing and it's great for, as a range finder for him. Now, there's some left hooks by Akeem. He's getting a little more leverage in, even though he's walking backwards when he threw it. were caught on the gloves of Melo Flores. Looks like Akeem might be sitting waiting to counter one time here. Hoping that that will be the one punch that does it. If there's any question about Akeem being able to go 12, that certainly has been answered. He's large amounts of punches in his Akeem using a strange tactic here. Yeah, that's an odd stance. And against a better fighter, that's what's going to happen. Right hands are going to land. It's a good right hand. And if a guy's a bigger puncher, it's going to hurt him. Those are, those are major league right hands. That last one was a tremendous right hand. Memo Flores has got a chin oh, break. Oh. Wow. Three minutes of boxing left. Let's see if Miguel Diaz doesn't get on his man All a little right, bit here. All right. We got home now. All right. Man. Last round now. We got home now. We got a this kind of real have a good time this time. Last round, last round. Okay, last round. Three rounds, baby. Wore him down good. Wore him down good. Wore him down good. Wore him down good. Him down good. Him down good. We finna be All right, let me dry him up. turn it off. But work the body, off. too. Last round, last round. Okay. Punches and bunch. Don't look to load up, but punch and bunch, okay? I'm not a punch. Last round. Punch and bunch. Bite down. Punch and bunch. We get him out of here. Huh. It's a 12 round. This is what they've been waiting for. I mean, they want plus one minute, all right? Yeah. I want plus yeah. one minute. It's like a party in there. They're having fun. Here's the jab of Akeem. It's been an incessant weapon for him throughout this fight. Not as festive an atmosphere in that corner. That was good reason. Akeem, opponent, but almost certainly Memo Flores will come up empty tonight. And a very impressive performance by Kid Akeem against a good opponent. Well, you know what's fascinating? Given his propensity to cut, I can't believe that people like Valentin Flores uh, and Willie Salazar, people he's lost on cuts, I can't believe those guys hit him with more or harder punches than Akeem did, and yet he cut in both those fights. Yeah, that's, that's, really, that's really true. Of course, he did say he's taken this fight much more seriously. His concentration has been better. As he gets older, he knows what he needs to do to get in shape. And, uh, 
you also might put this in the category of last hurrah for Flores, but look at the numbers. 900 thrown by Akeem. That's a strong number of punches. And uh, the landing percentage X was not so for Memo Flores. And you continue to have a shutout. 11 and 0 for Kid Akeem. One round. Flores, in my mind. There was a one point taken away, so that could conceivably be a 10 all. Oh, and round. you know what? I have to confess. I forgot to factor that in. <laughs> well, yeah. What's the difference? It won't matter. <laughs> Literary license. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> here in the final round. Obviously needs a knockout. Has to throw caution to the wind. Took an uppercut and a big uppercut and a right hand behind it by Hakeem. And he would love to punctuate this win by knocking Flores out in this last round. And he is certain the swelling now worse around the right eye. It's really just survival time now for Flores. Wicked right hand again by Hakeem. Two fights that were pretty one-sided ultimately, though that was a little bit surprising us because we really thought it would be it would be more one-sided, but yet nothing to criticize the opponents about. No, they've tried hard and just haven't been able to get off the mark. And now Flores is thinking survival. Just not there for Flores. As his head says, it is a king fire. Huge shot right there, and he may end up on the canvas with 10 seconds left in the fight. And we mentioned Kid Akeem is becoming a better finisher, and Padilla stops him. Absolutely, and that was the right decision. Whether there were five seconds or two seconds left, he didn't want him to get hit with one more punch. The correct decision by Carlos Padilla, and for this man, a complete victory. Well, it is, you'd be hard pressed to criticize anything that this young man did tonight. Very impressive performance. He keeps looking for the title shot. Certainly it has to be there. I would have to think immediately. Well, he feels he's ready. There's the left hand uh, that really hurt Flores. And he shows you what a good finisher he is. Measuring him, a good double left hook by a king. And that's the weapon they want him to continue to be better at. And there from another angle is where that left hook stunned Flores. And the king really went to work. Nice hooks, better hooks than he's been throwing. Oh, look at that. What what superb combination punching going upstairs and downstairs. You can't do much better when you have a man on the ropes. And as you said, there's just nothing to criticize Kid Akeem for. There's nothing even to say, well, he needs to work on this. Yeah. Maybe the left hand, although the left hand wound up being a big weapon. We'll make it official with Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Carlos Padilla steps in to call a halt to this bout at two minutes, 15. Six seconds of the 12th and final round. The winner by TKO, his record now 19 and 0, 14 KOs, and still NABF Super Flyweight Champion, the Black Eagle Kid, Aki. So the only thing that was left then was just the simple fact of reading the decision because it was never in doubt and Kid Akeem on his record gets another knockout. Good win for a very good young fighter. We'll be back to talk to him. BF Super Flyweight Division, there he is, Kid Akeem. And he is with Al Bernstein. Now, Well, they said uh, just a moment ago here in the ring, Miguel Diaz and Billy Baxter, we wanted to see if we had a champion. I guess the answer was yes because you were as strong, Akeem, in the 11th and 12th rounds as you were in the early rounds. That had to tell you something. Well, yeah, the guy was, he started kind of awkward, so I didn't catch up with his style. The first 10 round, then Roger kept telling me, cool down when you get the opportunity to do, you got to do your thing. That's what I did in the last round. All right, you did indeed, and th your jab was so effective throughout this match. Is that as, you, we've seen a good jab from you before, but this was a punishing jab the whole fight. Yeah, that's what I told the press in the other day, because his manager said, 
He's going to come right after me. Then, I, like I told you this morning, I'm going to just keep boxing, do my thing, because I got the opportunity. Were you surprised he went in that uh, last round? Oh, not at all. You know, I know he was a good fighter. He went a lot of distance with a lot of tough guys. So that don't mean no, you know. All right. Well, he was tough. Billy Baxter, your manager. Billy, you mentioned today you wanted some rounds. Well, you, you didn't just get rounds from him. You got a superb performance. Well, that's what you call a perfect script. We got all yeah. 12 rounds, but we got the knockout also. So uh, we got the rounds we need, and now we're looking for a world championship fight, our next fight. Uh, All right, here's the knock. Here's the knockout uh, at the end. What tremendous hand speed and good combination punching. Well, you know, Keem's come a long ways now. He's ready to go for the title now. I don't think there's a 115 pound in the world can beat him. We were recently offered a fight with uh, the new champion Coroga yeah, out of San Antonio, that. and. Uh, some reason they didn't take the fight, but ABC was interested in doing the fight, and uh, we're looking to fight whoever the champion is, wherever he may be. All right. You think you can get him a title shot soon? Well, we're, we're, we're ready to go anywhere we have to go. All right. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Congratulations. A quick one, Akeem. I'd like to say happy back there to my mother, America's mother, Bridget Fisher, and my mother-in-law, Ariel Scott. All right. Congratulations. Hey, he snuck those in pretty quick. You know he's catching on to this because he can sneak those names in at the end. Bruce Beck and Gil Clancy back in Atlantic City at the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. There's a look at Ricardo Sapir.